Your Walk. Episode 18. Do you see there, in the fall of the valley? Yeah, a farmhouse. Another farmer to chase us off, or tell the burn about us, or call the police, or kill us with a sword, or try and blow us up. Not just a farmhouse. Serious. Hello? Hello? Are you looking for an Irish community? I've heard of that. What did she say? An Irish community? Yeah, yeah, we are. You've found it, and very welcome you are. We've got food for you, if you'll help us gather it. Is this some sort of trap? No, I've heard of this place. A Myrite community. Eco-commune. They live together, sustainably. Homes built of natural materials, grow their own food, make their own clothes. They've done their sums as well. It's scalable. The world would be better if everyone lived like them. Mm, don't know about that, mate. No PlayStation, in it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a friend of Bobby Chaudhary and uh, Constanta and Tony in London. Ah, you must be Aaron. From London, right? Yeah, and around and about. I've heard about all of you. News travels by bicycle these days, but people did hear about the group who were being chased by the police. Your suspected terrorists? Yeah, about that. Um... <laughs> we know you're not terrorists. Haven't seen you at any New Tomorrow meetings at all. What? You're the terrorists? Not everyone in New Tomorrow is involved in the armed struggle. Mostly, we just believe in living in a sustainable way, trying not to mess up the only planet we have to live on. And, um, Adebayo sent word about you. We know he tried to help you. We know what happened to him. The burn and New Tomorrow are very different things, and we want to help you. Come with me, all of you. You look like you could do with a meal. Mike, we've got guests. Where's Priya? Hey, has Tracer been giving you the tour? The polytunnels, solar heaters, composting toilet. Did you see how the methane from the composting toilet eats up the old farmhouse? Mate, no offence, but that is gross. Oh, more gross than polluting expensively clean drinking water with shit every time you flush the toilet. Well, they can both be gross. Anyway, any friend of Bobby Chaudhry is a friend of ours. You're welcome to stay as long as you like, j just for a bit, or... Well, we find some people just never want to leave. Uh, just for a bit, if at all. Sorry. We've, uh, sorry. We've had some bad experiences with people being very friendly to us. Mate, those really are very nice cows. Can you let us have one? No. What, what are you going to do with a cow, anyway? I, uh... Yeah, you're probably right. Look, look you want stuff here, mister. You're going to have to work for it. You pick crops, you dig, you clean, then you get to enjoy what we've made here. That sounds very fair and not at all insane or mind-controlled. We're happy to work for our supper. We'll all get to picking some food for tea. Paul, Aaron, you come with me. Emma, why don't you go and help Tracy with the table? Hey, and Walker... Hmm. Tracy, do you think Priya? Yeah. Come with me, Walker. I've got someone who'd love to see you. Someone you met before all this started. See, we have polytunnels all over. It's not that we don't believe in modern tech. We've even got a couple of laptops working off generators. It's just that we can't be driven by it. Do you see? Hi, Trace. New visitors to the... Oh, yeah. Thought you'd want to meet. Yeah. It's up to you whether you say anything or not, Pri. Yeah, I know. Come and pick courgettes with me, Walker. We've got some things to talk about. You don't remember me, do you? Would it help if I offered to serve you some tea? Told you that your train was about to leave? No? Ach, well, I suppose you've been through some things since then. I was in the cafe, an Inverness station. I served you your tea, just before the world exploded. Oh, I've got the picture. I think it'd be nice if we had a chat. Here, help me with these courgettes. Pinch and twist, see? They just fall off into your hand. It's been a bumper harvest this year. 
Look, I know it might be hard to understand what we're up to. We are new tomorrow here. I know everyone thinks we're just evil terrorists, but I want to try to explain it to you. It's like... Every way I try to say it, it comes out sounding like I'm a crazy hippie. But okay, fine. Everything's connected. I don't mean I can hear the trees thinking and there's a great spirit guiding us. I mean, we're part of this planet. We're not just living here like we're renting it. We come from here. We are part of here. The sun warms us. The trees give us the oxygen to breathe. This earth grows the food we eat. The little creatures in the soil will eat our bodies when we die and we'll go back into that system. We're not separate from it. We depend on it. Walk along this row with me. We'll get some green beans. Did you ever see that TV series, Edge of Darkness? I saw it when I was a kid. It's good. There's a line in it. If it's a battle between humanity and the planet, I'm on the side of the planet. I mean, you have to be. We have to be. Everyone has to be. It's not just about hating people. It's, it's just logic. If 99% of people died tomorrow, but we kept the planet, humanity would be okay. It'd still be 80 million of us, but if you destroyed 99% of the planet and kept humanity, we're finished. Hair loss is a problem. Not just your grandpa's problem or your dad's problem, but two-thirds of all men start losing their hair by age 35 and turn to all sorts of weird coloring products and conditioners and try to hide the damage. 4 Hims is a new wellness brand that knows that it's way easier to keep the hair you have than to replace the hair you've lost. It's a convenient, online, one-stop shop for advice and doctor-approved solutions for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. You can save hours that you'd spend standing in line at the drugstore or clinic with 4 Hims. All you have to do is answer a few simple questions and the doctor will prescribe you exactly what you need to keep you looking and feeling great delivered right to your door. Our listeners get a trial month of everything you need to keep your hair for just $5 right now while supplies last. See website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. Go to 4 slash walk. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash walk. 4 slash walk. I don't seem to understand how stupid we're being. I feel like people in the future, if there are people in the future, will look back at us and just think, you idiots, you total, utter idiots, like we had the greatest gift in the history of the species, the discovery of oil. And what did you use it for? Burning it to heat up the planet and making plastic toys in Christmas crackers, which got instantly thrown into a landfill. This stupidity. Here, there are early apples on the tree. We'll take a few. Guys, dinner in 20 minutes, OK? We'll be there. For a long time, I thought, it'll be OK. The government will handle it. Then do you remember when they announced that they were no more great apes living in the wild? The only ones left are in the zoos now. I thought, well, this is a wake-up call. They'll act now to protect environments. But they didn't. And then 18 months ago, Hurricane Ingrid, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, gone. Just like that. They're not coming back. Those evacuated people are still living in tent cities. And I thought, well, this will mean there'll be international action. But there hasn't been. A few promises. Maybe there'll be a summit. Idiots still saying global warming's not man-made. And I thought, you know, what is it going to take? What would make them actually do something? Here, that's enough apples. Help me carry them. I used to work in a bank. Not a banker, just behind the glass in a bank in Manchester, doing people's transactions for them all day. Thinking, people are using this money to knock through to a conservatory, to take a holiday on a plane, or buy food flown from halfway around the world, and every little bit of it makes the world a tiny bit worse. I joined New Tomorrow because I thought I had to act. I couldn't just sit around and wait. You know, 
New tomorrow grew by 10 times in the three months after Hurricane Ingrid. We all agreed there had to be a wake-up call. So that's why we did it. I did it. We decided, and I was the one who did it. I set off the bomb in Inverness Station. I'm surprised you didn't run back to your friends, you know, to tell them. Yeah, we'll pick some of those berries too. Watch your fingers, the thorns are sharp. Did you know that it was saying you get that package that was my signal? To set the thing off. The burn told us that there was a secret military technology being passed through the station. I was in that cafe to observe and to act. If I saw the transfer being made, and there you were. She gave you the package. You went to the platform and I pressed the button. Triggered the bomb which set off the EMP. Boom. I know it was wrong to kill all those... No. You know what? I know I'm supposed to say it was wrong, but I don't really think so. Not at all. There are too many people. Too many for this planet to support. And I'm sad for all the people who lost someone. But people die. That's what happens. We grieve and we remember. And new people are born. Better a few people than all of us if we can't start looking after the planet that sustains us. Right. Are you coming or what? Just a sec. I want to make chutney tonight. Here, Walker. Let's get a few onions while we're here. So now there's an EMP all over Europe. No one's using electricity. Can you imagine how many emissions we're not making? How many trees we're not cutting down? How many pollutants we're not dumping into the rivers? Those people in Selkirk, we know about them, but we keep a wide berth. They say stuff about the greater good, but this is the greater good. Not saving every little human life, but making sure the planet we live on has a future. I bet you've wondered why you haven't seen more chaos on your journey, haven't you? That's us. We knew this day was coming. We have people in towns and villages all over the country ready with strategies, knowing where the wells and springs of clean water are, providing their crops to feed people, teaching them how to make gadgets like we have here, prompting the military to evacuate crowded urban areas and suggesting where to take the townies. It's going to be tough. People aren't going to be happy. There'll be a lot more boring meals. We won't taste bananas for a while. But slowly, more and more people will start to live like we do here. They'll see how easy and joyful it is. Lives of reading, walks, growing crops, cooking, talking. And when they get the power back on, in years, maybe we won't be able to go back to the old way. We won't want to. That's the plan anyway. And the burn were supposed to be helping us, but it turns out they're not what we thought, Walker and we want to help you stop them. And we're sure we can trust them? We're not sure we can trust anyone, but what Priya said seems solid. The girls here are really friendly too. <laughs> I mean, I'd trust them. Aaron, did you... Gentlemen never tell, Paul. So yeah, I did. Trace is keen, I'll tell you. This is, um... Definitely not the point. Listen, Priya seems to be on the same side as Adebayo, and if she can help you to get useful information, so much the better. Time to head out. We're meeting her at the edge of that field. Yeah, just watch yourselves, OK? Emma's definitely not coming, then. No. She needs a break. I think she's trying to persuade someone to let her get into the USB stick she found in Jackson's bag. She keeps saying that this is an important use of their solar power, and they keep telling her it's not. We'll see who wins in the end. In any case, she said she'd meet us up by the next village. The people at the farm can bring her on horseback. Wish they'd lend us some horses for the rest of the journey. We need them to work the farm, Aaron. But we can help Emma out. She seemed done in. She's had a hard time recently. 
Maybe she needs you to give her a hard... Enough! It's enough, okay. Emma's... I like her a lot. She's kind and she wants to do the right thing. And all right, she's got some crazy ideas, but... <laughs> Believe me, my ex had some crazier ones. So? Mate, you can't count on second chances, you know? You like her, you tell her. I'm not... I can't offer her anything. Not what she needs or deserves. This ain't Victorian times, Paul. So what if you got no money? Never stopped me getting with a girl I liked. No. I... There. Do you see it? Right on the ridge, just a dot in the distance. That's the burn camp I was telling you about. You have to be careful not to be seen. The burn can't know that we're helping you. That would... Too many of our people are embedded with them. It would be dangerous. I thought you were the ones saying that it didn't matter if people lived or died. I would give my life right now if I thought my death would help the world onto the right track. But there's no point giving your life for nothing. Or worse, letting it be used to help the enemy. So you... knew tomorrow considers the burn its enemy now? Not all of us. We... We started working with them because we thought they shared our goals. We have people everywhere. They're much smaller, but much more tech-savvy. Soleil, the leader who contacted our leaders, is quite brilliant. It became obvious to us that if we wanted to disrupt the way the world operates, disrupting the technology was the quickest, surest way to do it. Yeah, I know some people think that. Do you know a girl called Svetlana in London? I don't think I... Uh, never mind. Carry on. You were telling us how you and your friends decided to muck up the world for its own good. I felt a bit like that myself some nights after a few white lightnings. We knew they had their own projects. They came to us and suggested the EMP. A recourse of last resort, they said. And they could make it happen. We were supposed to work together now to use their tech know-how to set up renewable energy, low energy systems. But they kept stalling. And meanwhile, we know they're working on something of their own. They're, well, you've seen Selkirk. Do you know what's happened to Selkirk? What did they do there? Right from the start, Soleil told us she could get people to listen to us. We have a mole in the burn, a double agent. They've been feeding us information. They confirmed yesterday that the transmitters you told me about around Selkirk, they're part of Soleil's system to pacify people, to make them more biddable. But that system, the energy it needs is vast. If they try to roll it out across the world... Wait, wait. You're worried about the pacified village of mind-controlled quasi-zombies because of their eco-footprint? Yes. You have your priorities. We have ours. For now, they overlap. Our mole inside the burn told us that the camp is only lightly guarded today. That's the perfect place for you to... You want to know how they did what they did in Selkirk, right? We have to know what they're up to if we want to stay one step ahead. And how to stop them doing that Selkirk thing. To us. Right. So, the first thing is for you to get hold of one of their transmitters which is what we're here to do. I don't think there's anything. No, really nothing. How about you, Paul? Something I care about, like Priya cares about the planet. Something you'd give your life for, yeah. My little girl, Ruby. She's seven. Oh yeah, you said. She's the one you gave some random in Edinburgh 50 quid to call for three minutes from their mobile, right? Yeah. She's staying with her mum in America, just for the school holidays. <laughs> well, a bit longer than that now. Still, out of this anyway. <laughs> well out. And I get why you give up your life for her. Only natural, parents and kids. What about you, Shaw? Don't talk to me in front of Priya. Ah, she's miles in front, looking at the beautiful earwigs or nature's amazing fungal mould or something. Go on, no ducking out of it. 
Anything you care enough about to give up your life for? I'm looking forward to my life, you know. When this mission is over and I can get out of this office and go and do normal things. I really want my life. Like me, then? Nothing you give it up for. We do have to stop Soleil. I... If it ended up that I had to die to stop her, I would. That and, I don't know, world peace, cure cancer, magically heal the environment without having to kill a bunch of people, the usual stuff. I, I'd rather give my life than other people's. Yeah, fair enough. I'd rather you give your life than mine. <laughs> right, moment's been put off long enough for the quiet one. Walker, what about you? That camp is just a way station for the prisoners. Somewhere to keep them until a transport is going in the right direction. Plus something to keep the prisoners docile, our mole told us. Like a transmitter sending out some kind of signal. Yeah. So what's the plan, Pri? We go in with guns? Take them all out? Burn the camp to the ground? We keep a safe distance, monitor the guards' movements and wait for the point when there are only two guards left. Should be quite soon. That sounds... less exciting. Do you remember that I nick stuff for a living, right? I can do that with my eyes closed, Pre. Eyes closed and hands behind my back, I betcha. Let's just... do it with our eyes open and hands free, OK? If we're lucky, we can time it so that there's no danger of anyone seeing us at... Ah. What? I don't know about you, Priya, but I'm counting six. No. Seven guards at that encampment. I'm trusting our Mo. They said that most of the guards will be leaving soon. We just need to be at the right point when they do. They usually work on a regular schedule, the guards. They work one way, then another. It's predictable. As if they were being controlled somehow. Like programmed humans. No need to be creepy, mate. They could just be really thick. Which would be good. Ooh, oh, OCD. She had a cell once with a bloke who had OCD. <laughs> Tell you what, it was tidy. They used to go mental if I untucked one corner of my sheet and not the others. <laughs> that was a fun way to spend a Sunday afternoon. If we stay here for another couple of minutes, I'll have the pattern down. See there, guard two moves off to do his check at the front gate every ten minutes precisely, so he should be going just about... Looks like he's scratching his arse. No. There he goes. Bingo. We're going to walk in now from the west. Stay behind the screen of these trees. They won't have anyone looking in this direction for another several minutes. Start walking. No. Shouldn't we have, like, super secret agent hand signals or something so we don't even have to talk? Yeah! See this hand signal I'm making right now, Aaron? That's specially for you. 